graphics card ratings on gaming laptops needs a shake-up. With NVIDIA getting rid of the Max-Q and Max-P, Max-Q being quiet, Max-P being performance, or at least that's unofficially how they are known, earlier or in January this year, what's happened since? NVIDIA have been spruiking at the time that the power levels would be viewable within the NVIDIA control panel, which is handy when you have the laptop in front of you and you can quickly load it up. But what happens when you're out there looking at a brand new laptop sitting on a store shelf? You look on the boxes and it says processor, RAM, graphics card. It never mentions wattage. And wattage can make a huge difference between a low performing 3060 and a high performing 3060. You might have a 3060 in one gaming laptop that might be 120 watts. You might have a 40 watt 3060 in another and there is going to be a very large difference in performance between those two. And with the removal of the definition of Max-Q, Max-P, it makes it even harder to guess where the video have essentially put it on to the manufacturer going, you can put any model of chip in there and we'll have it so it comes up in the control panel and that's our bit business done, we're finished there. Yet you can have two completely different performing machines with the apparent same graphics card in there. Another thing to add is different generations of graphics card with the 2000 series. So let's say you had a 2070 in there running at 120 watts in your laptop and you bought a new 3060 laptop. Great, you got a 3060, you fire it up and it's running at 60 watts. In this current scenario, I would almost expect the 2070 being a year or two old will usually outperform the newer 3060 chip due to these power levels. But the, fair enough, there may be different power levels out there. The, uh, the challenging thing is that the, pet, the customer, the end user, the buyer, isn't being informed of this, or at least easily. If you've got to dig into the specifications to be able to find that, if you physically need the machine in front of you running to be able to find that information, that is a big failure on the video's part and also the manufacturer's part. Granted, some manufacturers do put in their specifications on their website, but they don't put it on the pamphlets, they don't put it on the advertising for the machine, they don't put it on the spec sheet sitting in front of the machine in the shop. Where some individual customers, manufacturers may choose to do that, or sellers may choose to do that, it is not always the case. It is not standardized, it is not expected. It's also the same with many other aspects of the computer world and also other industries. But it's one thing that can make a huge difference. Myself, I've tested about four different 3060 machines this year. I'm about to get my hands on another one right before the end of the year to make that five. And all of them didn't really explicitly tell me what the power levels were of those cards, in the, the graphics cards in those machines. I either had to go to the manufacturer's website and look up the exact serial number or model number to be able to find out what it could be. And even then, the listings seem to be vague and never 100% precise, especially when you've got the swappable TDP between the CPU and the GPU. So you may get 15% leeway either way of a certain figure. So it might be runs at 60 watts but can go up to 75. And in some instances, I've never really seen it crack that extra 15 watts. So it's definitely one thing that I do believe the PC world does need an overhaul on, especially when plenty of people are going out there buying a thin and light machine might have a 3060 in there, it's 40 watts, their friend goes out and buys a different model, and it might be not a thin and light, it's just a normal desk, a normal gaming light, laptop, let's say, Legion 5, and get their hands on a Legion 5, it, I think those run between 100 to 120 watts. They're gonna stick those machines side by side, both might be, the rest of the specs might be identical, same processor, same amount of RAM, or very similar, and there's gonna be a huge difference between those two. Anyway, let's say they might be playing Battlefield 2042. Not many people are playing it, but anyway. Let's say the higher wattage 3060 might be playing everything at medium graphics, native res, getting anywhere from about 100 FPS to 120. Yet their mate's sitting there on the same machine struggling to get 70 FPS. So there is definitely a huge difference, a huge discretion or disparity between them. So it's one thing that I do believe the industry does need an overhaul on.